So I figured I would do a bit of a story time mix with helpful tips if you are a coach or a consultant service provider. And the way you book clients is through getting on the phone and having a conversation with someone. You're gonna wanna listen to this. Because just the other day, I got off a sales call where I was potentially interested in joining a specific program. And let's just say I couldn't get off the phone fast enough. And this is from a very large company who you would think employs very experienced salespeople. Now, I did not have the best experience and I'm gonna tell you what you should avoid doing if you want your ideal clients to feel really good on the call and actually feel excited to learn about your offer versus trying to get off the phone as quickly as possible. I jump on sales calls Sometimes I actually don't do a lot of sales calls in my own business anymore to sell my programs. I have other systems that do that for me. And I sometimes, not too often, but sometimes I will end up on a sales call for a program to help me. I'm a huge fan of education, mentorship. So far today, I've probably spent over $300,000 in education, mentorship, coaching, and I've been in business for over eight years. So it's been a while. The, the way that I got on the call in the first place is a strategy that I don't necessarily recommend most people to do unless they're very big and they have a sales team. So the way that I ended up on, the, on this call is the person that I saw online, I don't really follow this person very much, but uh, we're friends on Facebook. So this person told said about a big result that they're experiencing and they've sold like millions and millions of dollars of info product sales and uh, with a very good return on ad spend. So I love to run ads and I'm always looking for ways to increase my return on ad spend, of course. So there was a training that was included and it's like, it was kind of like a, a weird process, which I'm not a fan of, where it seemed like the training was free, but it's not free. It's free if you join the program, but that wasn't very clear. You had to apply for the program and then get in the sales call. And then if you were to join the program, then you would get the train. So anyway, it was it was a little confusing. I did not know the person very well. I wasn't really clear about like, what's the point of the program? I wasn't really primed for it, if you will, which is a huge thing that I don't recommend people to do. I recommend to you to prime your audience and like make sure you get on the phone with people that actually know what you're doing. But if you have a sales team, it does look a little bit different. So I applied for whatever reason, I don't usually apply, but I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna apply. I'm gonna see what happens. I booked a call and first of all, and this is not a big issue, the salesperson wanted to move the time of our appointment 30 minutes early, which is fine. Like I understand that happens. What I didn't like is that she didn't update the appointment in my calendar and I and look, I live by my appointment. I don't know about you, but I don't know what's going on in my life unless I look at my calendar. I'm like, okay, here's what I have going on. And then I can fill in the blanks with like my own behind the scenes stuff. That's what I do. If you do this too, if you live by the, by the calendar, let me know below and tell me like, yeah, I love the calendar. So she did not update the calendar. I was supposed to be, be on the Zoom call. She asked me to move the time maybe like five days beforehand. So I honestly, I just completely forgot. Uh, she texted me. She's like, I'm waiting on the Zoom call. I'm like, what's happening? Why is she waiting on the Zoom call 30 minutes early? And I'm like, oh, okay, that's right. So jump in the call, whatever. It's all good. And the very first thing that was very obvious to me is her energy. I'm a huge believer in the fact that energy sells. How you show up is extremely powerful and it will either magnetize the right ideal client to you or it will repel the wrong client away from you, basically. So when you're looking to scale and hire salespeople, you probably want to make sure they have a similar level of energy that as you do. So if you want your programs to be very friendly and open and like kind and whatever, then you obviously should be qualifying your salespeople based on that. I don't again, I'm not passing judgment on the person that's created this this company. I don't really know what they're doing and who they really are that much. With that said, I got on the call and the energy of this woman was so intense, so hardcore. She seemed to like just want to, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was just very like, all right, all right, let's, let's, let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to it. It wasn't even that it was fast, but it was just very aggressive, kind of. It's kind of hard to explain because she wasn't pushing me necessarily, but it was the urgency, the like, there was this like sharky energy. I can't explain it. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's this kind of sharky energy. She's like, hey, yeah, so so um, 
you're going to talk? Yes. Okay. So, you know, you told me you're, you, what are you looking for? Like what's going on? Let me tell me about the, about the company it was very like, there was no fluff, no like, hi. Oh, it's so good. Like she wasn't, I couldn't tell that she was smiling. There was no warmth there. And for me, it's very important. And you know, that's just, everyone has their own way of selling. Everyone has their own way of buying. For me, I want to connect. I want to really feel like we vibe together. And for me, that's important. Might not be important to you or them. And that's totally okay. But for me, that was the first thing I was like, whoa, this person's really trying to get right to it. And look, I'm an introvert. I don't really like small talk, so I get it, but it's just how you approach it. So anyway, um, we started to have a conversation a little bit. She was she asked me a few questions in the very beginning, but then after I told her just a tiny bit, it's so funny because she would ask me a question and then I would start to answer and then she would cut me off, assume what I meant and then go off of that, which is so bizarre to me because it's such a like obvious thing not to do on a sales conversation. You don't want to assume anything, but maybe she was on a deadline. Maybe she only had, I don't know, 30 minutes. I don't really know, but I would start talking and she would kind of, yeah, just be like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, so <laughs> like, okay, cool. I mean, it's totally fine. I did file an application, so I'm like, maybe she really knows what I'm looking to do. And look, I've been in business for over eight years. Like, I've made millions of dollars in my company, so I'm not a newbie. And this is the thing. It's like, if only you'd actually listened to the answers I provided, you would know that I'm not a newbie. It was very obvious. So the assumptions were flowing. I don't recommend assuming ever on any sales conversation because you're going to make an ass out of you and me. That's kind of what we know, right? <laughs> so she was kind of going off on her tangent. And here's the other thing that was, that was happening. She, because she assumed so much about me without me telling her, she thought my problems were what she thought they should be versus what they actually were. So she was talking to me about like, Oh, you know, like if you're making, you know, 30 to 50 K months, you know, it, it seems like, you know, you need to be doing blah, da, 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 da. And, you know, you need to be doing automation and, you know, you, and I'm like, I do, <laughs> I already believe in automation. I didn't tell her. She didn't give me the opportunity to tell her because she just went on a monologue for like five minutes about automation and like other things. And I was, I was like, I mean, if you had just asked me what I'm focusing on and what I'm selling and how I'm selling it, you would be very, it would be very obvious to see what my biggest interest point was. But for me, the biggest interest point right now is more traffic at a lower cost and a higher conversion. That's all I care about right this moment. That's my focus, right? I already know my systems. I have automation. I like my programs. My programs are selling and I want it to be optimized and refined so I can scale with more confidence and invest more into ads. That's my focus. She was going on and on and on about like, yeah, you really need to start automation and da 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 da. Okay, you know so much about me. Please keep talking. Please just tell me what else I need without knowing what I actually have already. So that was that. I was just like, okay, is she ever gonna ask me a question? And then she was like, let me tell you about the program. I'm like, all right. So this is a mastermind program, okay? So it's very, this is very interesting. I have, like I said, I've been supportive of the coaching industry for many years since I started my business and before that. And I've been a part of many masterminds. I've spent lots of money on masterminds. I enjoy masterminds. Instead of asking me whether I've been a part of masterminds, she went on about what are masterminds? Are they good? What happens in a mastermind? And this is again, it, it's a symptom of not listening. It's a symptom of like, you don't know what I need. So you're assuming. And therefore this whole conversation becomes like, it feels like a waste of my time. And then the other big issue that was happening that she was focusing on when she was talking about the offer, that I don't recommend any of you to do is she was really harping on the features, 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 features. Here's what's included. You get this and you get that and you get access to these consultants and you get access to some events that we do and you get this. And I'm like, okay, that that's great. And that's great and, and fun and stuff like that. And I don't really care about those features. What I care about is how are you helping me get to my outcome? First of all, you don't know what my outcome is. Second of all, how, what's your approach to the outcome, which is a huge thing. Like this is what we teach in Surf to Sell. Like we have a whole way of teaching how to have some sales conversations in Surf to Sell that is going to actually be fully aligned with your ideal client and what they're looking for, because it's not about you just assuming it's about like prescribing a solution based on what the, so anyway, not gonna, not gonna cut off track. 
So she was talking about all the features, things that are included, but I still wasn't like, well, how is that gonna help me get to where I wanna go? Like, I don't have time to be sitting on five calls a week. I don't have, I don't really wanna go to lots of different events, to be very honest. Who's even gonna be at these events? I don't know who these people are. I don't know who's gonna, who's the right ideal client for this. I don't even know if this is right for me. I don't even know if this is for, it seemed like it was for beginners. I wasn't sure if it's for beginners. The things that she was telling me seemed like it probably was for newbies, but I didn't know. I, I just, I had no idea, right? So again, I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sold on the process. I'm not sold on like your thing, your angle, and you talking to me about features and what's included, honestly, is going one, like in one ear, out the other, I just don't care because I don't even know if you can help me. So why does it matter if I have five calls when I don't know if those calls are gonna be a waste of time or not? So hopefully this is helping you if you do sales calls, like this is what your ideal client is thinking about. You wanna make sure that they actually are sold on your approach, on your process, before you go into the details. The details don't really matter that much. Now here's the thing. She just kept talking and talking and monologue after monologue and I was just like, mm-hmm. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. I'm just like, when, when can I actually interject and be like? So eventually, I didn't even know what the price was. I don't, I actually didn't, still wasn't like, what are, what are she selling to me exactly? I don't really, I'm still not sold. Like, I don't really know what is even being talked about here. So I cut her off 30 minutes in and I'm like, hey, this, all, this sound sounds um, interesting. Send me an email with all the details and I'll let you, I'll let you know if I'm interested. And she's like, okay, well, would you like to follow, you know, schedule a follow up, which is great. That is great. That you, you know, that's that's a good thing to do. Um, and I said, yeah, that's fine. I'll reach out if I need help. And that was that. So thankfully, I was able to get off the phone, which was which is great. Um, she sent over an email again with all the things that were not relevant to me and I did not care about, including mainly the features. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, cool, like whatever. That's it is what it is. That's that's that. So the moral of the story here is I feel like I wasted my time and I it's it's kind of unfortunate because there's a way to not have made me feel like I wasted my time. All she had to do was actually listen to my problem, understand my situation, understand where I currently am and what I've done, and explain to me what this person, this company, this process that they have, what is their approach? What do they believe that approach is the thing? And sell me on that before you talk to me about all the details, all the features, all the little things, and da 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 da, and the events, and the Don't care. I just don't. Now, this is not saying that, you know, she's not good or whatever. All of it combined just wasn't aligned for me. Maybe, I mean, I'm sure it works for many people. I'm sure it does. And the way that I like to sell and the way that my clients like to sell is just different. It just comes from the heart and it doesn't feel like a lot of convincing energy and a lot of like, it wasn't even pressure. It was just irrelevant to be very honest. And if you don't want to be wasting time on sales calls and doing sales calls in the way that this woman did, then I highly recommend getting the right training and working with somebody that actually understands how to do it in a way that feels good for both you and your ideal client. This is something that we teach in Surf to Sell. We have a mastermind. This is what we teach in Surf to Sell, so definitely recommend you check it out. Watch the free masterclass, see how it feels for you if you're new. Um, if you're more established, you know, you can still check it out, but I would reach out for a one-on-one -on -one instead. But that's what we got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this little story time, got something out of it for you so that your sales conversations can feel a lot better in the future. I'll see you in the next video.